weeks, we're going to be introducing you all to the code. To explain what we mean by the code, it could be referred to as our culture or our core values. It's kind of down those sorts of lines. Yes, yeah, so to be clear, we're not bringing our vision. We're we'll bringing that later in the year. Actually, we believe that culture is more important to focus on initially than vision. Um, you know, if you're not united in the values we hold and the way in which we behave then and treat each other, we, we aren't able to actually carry a vision in a united way. So a couple of years ago, when I was pregnant with Naomi, our fourth and final child, um, before we'd been asked to take on the leadership at Reviver Tour, we decided that as our family was nearing completion, that we wanted to be intentional about the culture and the values we raised them by. Yeah, so we got a, a rare day without the other three children, sat in a coffee shop to get this down on paper. We came up with um, a series of, of values, a culture, we wanted to raise our children by based on the Bible and the way God calls us to live. You know, whether you're you're new to Revive or you're just checking us out, whether you know God or not, this is a really great thing to do. Yeah. You know, Stephen Covey, he's a, a best-selling author, was a best-selling author of uh, the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, world-class leader and, and coach. He talked about having a vision statement for yourself and your family. And, and there's something powerful in writing down your goals, who you want to be, how you want to move forward intentionally. It pays off. Yeah. So as we wrote all of this down and we did our own uh, culture, we sat back and we looked at this at the end of the day. And uh, both of us got this really profound feeling that this was just not for our house, um, but for a wider house, for a church. And it was from that point that God started birthing in us a structure and a vision for a church. We genuinely had no idea which church until a few months later when Peter and Janice asked us to take on the leadership here at Revive. With everything Rose and I plan and implement as leaders, um, but also as parents and business owners and in every, every area of life, we really like to consider the why. You know, why do we want to do things that way? What is driving it? With church leadership, that means that we, we challenge everything we want to implement and ensure it's based on the vision God has given us and his word, not any personal preference, insecurities, and other things that you know can cloud reasoning. We then often simplify these deeply prayed through and thought through principles and ideas to make a simple phrase or a sentence, and that helps make it stick in people's minds. Like our four strategies, know God, get free, find purpose, make a difference. This isn't just a catchy strap line of what we hope discipleship will look like. Behind each of those strategies is a theologically backed up, prayed out and thought through step in a journey that we believe people take in discipleship. Every ministry, therefore, will be lined up against these strategies and put through the lens of these strategies to help us understand if we are helping people on the journey of discipleship. Yeah, and it, it's the same with the code, you know, that we're, we're going to introduce to you now. This is a, a set of phrases to help us understand the culture of the house. You know, it isn't a, a set of snappy phrases with no depth. Um, it's a set of snappy phrases <laughs> with a huge amount of depth to them. It, you know, everything we do as a family and in the house that is Revive, we're embodying these values. These simple sentences in the code are designed to cause us to engage around a clear, simple set of behaviours or values, a bit like a, a lighthouse. You know, these values, the light, will help us all align to the one purpose and the vision of the house, you know, the way forward. With the kids now, they're starting to get to know these phrases and challenge their own behaviour based on them. For example... Uh, one of the values we, we have is we give even if it hurts. And very often one of our children will come home from school with a pack of sweets as a result of it being someone's birthday. Don't know who started that at school, but thank you very much. And uh, they'll always ask, obviously the other kids will always ask if they can share them and I'll always ask them to share. Most of the time that's fine, but sometimes they don't want to. And it now only takes me to say to them, what do we do in this house? And they will respond, we give even if it hurts and then choose to share the sweets. That's right. We, we wholeheartedly believe that, that unity is helped hugely 
by a strong culture, a set of values we all align ourselves to and allow to shape the way we communicate, behave, treat each other, conduct ourselves and, and the feel of the house of, our, of this church. So this week is just an intro to the code and we'll briefly take you through all of them now and then from next week we're going to go into each one um, a week and unpack each one. So for a, from a practical perspective, we've already talked about you know words to live by, um, you know writing down truths from God's word that you can de- declare every day over yourself. This week, why not start to think about other areas of your life, you know, family life, work life, where you may need to be more intentional about the values you're living by. And maybe some of these actually apply. And also, uh, words to live by, you can find that in Ben's message, What Lies Are the Spies Telling You? And that's on YouTube. Yep, so here we go. The values, the code. Number one, we look beyond ourselves, based on Philippians 2, verses three to four. Number two, we work for the king based on Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Number three, we give even if it hurts. Deuteronomy 15, verse 10. Number four, we choose joy and adventure. Psalm 16, verse one. Number five, we are warriors. Philippians 4, verse six to seven. Number six, we are a safe place. Ephesians 4, 16. Number seven, we worship in spirit and in truth. John 4, verse 23 to 24. And last of all, number eight, above all else we love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to unpack the meaning of each one of these for you starting next week with... We look beyond ourselves.